Back in 2016, my brother Luke killed a pretty nice deer. It was, I think it was November 12th. Um, me and my dad and my brother went out and I have in this property that I used to hunt, I don't really hunt there anymore, but there's two tree stands on one side of the property and then the other side, uh, I didn't have a chance to set up a stand. So this, this particular morning, I took my dad over to the tree stands and my brother decided to go sit over by where I had a really nice eight pointer on camera and I almost, it was funny looking back on it because I almost told him like, no, you go take dad and sit in the stands because we kind of thought that was a better spot. It was more consistent movement on cameras. But this one eight pointer in particular that I really wanted to kill that year, that week had hit like that scrape right in front of that camera a bunch of times. So one of us was gonna go sit. He's like, I'll just, I'll just walk over there and sit on the ground. So I took my dad over. Um, we went in just before light, probably like 15 minutes. And so I took my dad over, we get set up in our stands. I put him in his stand, I go sit down in mine. And by the time we got in there and, and got sat down in our stands, it was probably like two or three minutes after legal shooting. And so I literally, sit my butt down in the stands and I hang like my backpack up and I lay my gun across my lap and literally just like get quiet for a second and then bang 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 like three shots rapid fire and it was right from the direction that my brother was walking and so he had said he wasn't going to shoot a small deer that year so I knew it was probably a good one and so I texted him really fast I was like Did you shoot a deer and he calls me like two seconds later and he was flipping out. He was like, I just shot a monster. He was like losing his mind. And so I asked him like, well, was, it, was it the deer I had on camera? And he's like, I think so. He didn't really know. Um, so what had happened apparently was that he walked down this road and it kind of goes up into this overgrown Christmas tree field. Um, I had my camera just off to the left of it and right inside the woods off of this field, uh, this, this particular eight pointer was using the scrape consistently, like every three days or four days. It was always right before light or right after light. And I figured during the rut, eventually the deer was going to slip up and show up right around legal shooting light. So I just figured it was the same deer. So, um, he was walking in and I guess he heard something run in the woods right where my cameras were. And so he grabbed his grunt too, but he grunted really loud, like three times and the deer stopped. And so he let it sit for a minute and didn't hear anything. So he grunted one or two more times and then really quickly kind of just ran into the woods a couple steps and just stood there. So he grunted and kind of tried to sound like a deer by going into the woods so he could see into the into that spot. And so when he got in there, he said as soon as he made those steps, that deer turned around and ran at him, thinking he was another buck. And so I'm assuming there's probably a hot doe in the area. That's my guess because he was literally like smashing his rack off of stuff coming in apparently. And so he comes in and I guess my brother took a shot at him. He's probably like 20 yards, pretty close. And I think we weren't sure he hit him. He only hit him once that we could find. No, hit him twice that we could find and he shot three times. So I think he missed him on the first shot. And then as he was running, he hit him on the second shot. And then he stopped when he hit him that second time, stopped and like actually like turned and he hit him in the shoulder. And so on the trail camera video that I'm gonna show you, this deer just happened to walk right in front of that camera I had and then get super wobbly and tip over. And so it was, it was pretty funny because like I didn't realize when I showed up to look at the deer, I didn't realize that Luke hadn't touched the deer before. And I know myself, if I shoot a deer, I usually like to be the first one to look at it. And so like the idiot that I am, I just walk over and like pick it up and I'm looking at it. And he, he didn't even care. He, he told me later, he's a lot more laid back about hunting than I am. Clearly I'm obsessed, but um, he, he told me, he's like, I didn't even pick it up yet. And I was like, sorry, my bad. But um, so when I picked it up, I'm like, dude, this is not the deer I have on camera. It was, it was a nine point, the one that he shot, um, had a broken off point that probably would have been matching on the other side, like an eight or nine inch, I think it was a G3. So um, had it not been broken off, that deer probably would have scored like mid 130s, which in Maine is a really big deer. So, um, but yeah, it was crazy. I actually, this deer I hadn't had any pictures of, no history with, and I posted it on a Maine deer hunters page and I had a guy message me and he's like, you shot Doug. And I was like, I don't think I did. <laughs> I don't know a Doug and I definitely didn't shoot one. <laughs> and uh, he's like, no, you shot Doug. And he sent me trail camera pictures of this buck. Had the same broken off point. I mean, it's clear as day. I actually don't know if I still have them. If I can find the trail camera pictures, I'll post them um, in the video. But he, yeah, it was, it was nuts. And it was, I think four or five days before my brother shot it. And it was as the crow flies, like over two miles away, like a couple roads over. 
and that deer had been living there. Like they had history with this deer for a while. Um, and he was really cool about it. He wasn't mad. He was actually pretty excited to see that someone shot it. It was like a five and a half, six and a half year old buck. Um, so it was cool. Um, the biggest deer that any of us have shot until this year. Luke, I'm coming for you. Um, but anyways, um, so that was a pretty cool morning. Um, I, it was special to have our dad there that time. Um, the reason that we do this is for the memories. And I wish, really wish that we actually would have some of the previous memories and previous hunts documented because I can remember them really well. But like, even like my brother freaking out after he shot that, like that was such a special memory because um, it doesn't happen very often that you kill a deer like that. So you really have to like soak those moments up. Um, so, but yeah, that's the story of Doug.